This is my point. Listen to this. Turn with me first to Luke chapter 10. I want to show you something. I want to read this scripture to you. Luke chapter 10, verse 20. I want you to hold your finger there and then go over to Hebrews 3. And I want to read this scripture. This is to the point first. Living for Jesus is not a monthly or yearly or weekly position. It's a daily attitude to save a world from death, hell, and the grave. Is your attitude to save somebody tomorrow. Is it your attitude? I want you to pray for Jesse the Planets because I'm flying. I've been preaching for two weeks. When I leave here, I'm flying home tomorrow. I'm going right slap in the Mardi Gras fat city, New Orleans. Y'all call it New Orleans. We call it New Orleans. And there going to be people boogieing all over the street. Good day, man. Drunk, a skunk, messed up, going to hell. And guess what? They call it a religious holiday. It's called Fat Tuesday. Blow it out, boy, because Lent starts on Wednesday. Isn't that amazing? That's amazing to me. And I used to do it all the time myself. Listen to my point. Living for Jesus is not a monthly or yearly or weekly position. It is a daily attitude to save a world from death, hell, and the grave. What is your attitude? I'll tell you what my attitude is going to be. There are going to be people, if I'm standing out, they're going to walk and they want to drink. I'll say, man, I've been drinking for years. I'm an alcoholic on the new wine of Jesus Christ. If they can holler, throw me something, mister. And if they can dance all over the street, why can't I lift my hands up, praise God, and shout and dance? They'll think, my God, he's having fun. But I'll preach the socks off a billy goat. I'll nail the devil right down Main Street. I can do it if I live Christianity as a daily affair. He said, take up my cross daily and follow me. So I go daily. Is this too loud? Say amen. Good. Glory to God. What I'm saying is this, I, my attitude toward Christ is on a daily basis. I don't get up and say, God, don't you remember me? I'm your baby boy, the one with the television smile. <laughs> Come on, Lord. I'm not, I don't even ask God for personal things. I don't ask God to give me things. I don't. I just say, Lord, glory to God. Hello, how you doing? When I go to the throne, I don't go, okay, don't beat my brains out. When I go to the throne, I have, have an attitude. I've lived daily for Jesus. My attitude is a daily Christian walk, not just Sunday or yearly or monthly or revival time. Mine's a daily attitude. Every morning I say, hello, Lord. He say, hi, Jesse. And I can hear them devils. Oh, God, he's up again. Watch him. Watch him. Yeah, they better watch me. I shook up a maid last week. It was fun. She come and said, can I clean your room? I said, certainly. She said, will you be leaving? I said, in just a minute. She ran in there and we were, uh, you know, I got my stuff and I was about, in fact, I was about waiting on the pastor to pick me up for lunch. <laughs> Glory to God. I was in Alabama, Muscle Shoals. Florence, Alabama. Boy, she started fixing the bed, and I went, glory! I hollered about this loud. Glory! She went, what's the matter? I said, Jesus is real. He's real. I said, do you know the Lord? She says, I go to church. I go to church. Really, I go to church. Really, I do. I said, I didn't ask if you went to church. Do you know Jesus? She said, oh, uh, I think so. I said, then you don't know him. And I didn't realize how loud I was talking. But you could hear me. About nine rooms down. I had the door open. My attitude was, get somebody saved today. Take them across there. My flesh said, shut up, man. Don't embarrass yourself, fool. Come on. You got gray hair. You look like you got dignity. Look at you, boy. You wear nice suits, man. Don't let people know you're nuts. Keep that down. All of a sudden, I said, I bind you, devil. She said, I'm sorry. I said, I'm not talking to you, honey. I said, I'm just talking to the devil, trying to manifest it in my thought pattern. Well, I didn't realize how loud I got till the manager come. The manager come, and she was a blonde-headed lady, glasses. She said, I heard y'all hollering. What's going on? I said, it's Jesus. She said, you got it too? I said, yeah, I got it. You got it? She said, yeah, I got it. Both of us started hollering. Glory. <laughs> right there in a hotel room in Florence.
That's Alabama, Muscle Shoals, Alabama. I said, when did you get it? She said, I got it two weeks ago. She said, when you got it? I said, I got it 10 years ago. She said, my Lord, give me some of what you got. Give me some more. Now, you see, the maid didn't say nothing because that's the boss. So we just prayed. God, all right, thank you, Jesus. The maid said, amen, glory to God. Thank you, Father. <laughs> see, it's a daily attitude. Now, you said, I just wouldn't do that. Well, neither would I. But the Spirit of God would. The Spirit of God allowed to do something wild. Right in church, Peter laid hands on a man and started jumping, leaping, and screaming for joy. Do you know you can go in some churches and lift your hand up that stop the servant and say, uh, you want something? They <laughs> think, my God, the man's sick. You know, the first time I preached in the Catholic church, we had 17 people hit the floor. When we finished, they had three ambulances outside. They're called three ambulances. Them guys come and said, man, they're dying like flies in here. What's going on? Three of them. Three of them. They're dying like flies. You know, when I preached, I went and ministered in, during the day at a place called St. Anthony's. They fell all over the place. People didn't know what to think. You never saw nothing like that. Especially if a guy's gray headed and you fall down, everybody thinks, man's dead of a heart attack. <laughs> See? Say, you don't mind praying in public? Come on with me. God tells me. I don't do things just to freak people out. But I can tell when the Holy Ghost is about ready to blow one on me. I can tell. It starts coming up. Not, a lot of time I go, not here, not here, please. <laughs> not here, not here. Come on, God, please, not here. <laughs> Man, I'm at the Dallas Mandalay Hotel. In Las Colinas, I'm talking mega bucks. I'm talking rich elite. And the Holy Ghost going, mm. I'm going, no, not here, not here. He said, rich people go to hell too, Jesse. You ever stand up at the Mandalay Hotel and say, bow your heads, we're going to pray over the food. And they go, you don't want to do that. Cost you like sixty to hundred dollars a person to eat, and you know I've noticed in real fancy restaurants they only give you little bitty portions. I never forget they gave me some soup. Never it was yellow soup. I never I don't even know mussel soup with saffron. Bon, and they said, Monsieur. It's a French play, the Angele Room. Anybody ever been there? The Angele. You ever been in Angelay? You know what I'm talking about? That's a nice place, huh? Class, ain't it? Glory to God. <laughs> it's class, Bob. Monsieur, would you like to taste the soup? I said, certainly. <laughs> now, I see, when you're going in fancy restaurants, you don't eat soup like this. No, you take the spoon and go like this. You don't eat it like this. You eat it like this. So I was about ready, and I went, oh. I read the book, <laughs> and the man was standing there with a little white towel. I went, it was, that's the best thing I ever put in my mouth. I said, say, brother, leave the pot. <laughs> he, he went, the pot. I said, leave the pot, my man. Drop it right there, right where you are. Oh, when I got my bill, I should have asked how much the pot costs. <laughs> Let me make an announcement. Don't order the pot <laughs> unless you got a gold American Express <laughs> to cover it. And I said, God, I don't want to do that here. He said, rich people go to hell too. You understand what I'm saying here? I want you to listen to it. Let's read Luke 10, verse 20. What make you do those things? 10, verse 20, Luke 10, 20 says, Notwithstanding in this, rejoice not that the spirits are subject unto you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. Hebrews 3, quickly, turn with me to it. Listen to the point. Living for Jesus is not a monthly or yearly or weekly position. It is a daily attitude to save a world from death, hell, and the grave. Hebrews 3, verse 13 says this. But exhort one another daily. Everybody say daily. 
Didn't say Jesus said take up your cross daily. A supreme consciousness of living for Christ daily. But exhort one another daily, Hebrews 3.13. While it is called today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. It's very possible that if you don't live and take up your cross daily, and if your attitude is not to live daily for Jesus, that your heart can be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. Before you know it, you don't want to go to church. You don't want to do nothing. Because you did not have the supreme consciousness of a believer of taking up your cross daily. Every day, get into the Word of God. How long? That depends on you. Pray every day. Never cut God's time out and never wait till the end of the day to do it neither. Why? Because you're wore out and tired. You try to pray at 9.30 and you've been working all night at 10 o'clock. You're going to pray about 30 seconds. You're gone. Because your body is whipped. Do it when you're refreshed. Won't you give a little bit of your lunch hour to the Lord? Ever thought about that? Listen to what I'm saying here. Hebrews 3 verse 13. But exhort one another daily while it is called today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. So I decided to live for Jesus. My attitude is to live daily so my heart would not be hardened with the deceitfulness of sin. Start tomorrow, Saturday. Well, Lord, we got the weekend. Man, I've been working all week. I want to spend time with my family, have a good time. But how can I touch people for Jesus today? What can I do? I don't have to say nothing. Can I shine for the Lord? Can I smile for God? What can I do? Holy Spirit, flow through me. Just flow through me. Flow through me. Flow through me. I got a friend of mine. He went over to a K and B's, which is a, a drugstore in the New Orleans area. And he walked out, and this lady was going like this. Walking, you know, I guess she had something wrong with her leg. And his name is Barry, Barry Lash. And Barry walked up and said, honey, can I pray for you? And the lady freaked out. Pray for me? Right here in the parking lot? He said, do you know the Lord of Helium? She said, you think so? He said, no, I know so. He said, can I pray for you? She said, she's hurting, man. Yeah, he prayed for that woman. And God healed that woman right in the parking lot, a K and B. She freaked out. I mean, you could see the shock on her face. You know what Barry said? Thank you. Went in the store, got what he wanted, got in his car and drove home. What did he do? Holy Spirit, flow through me. He just exhorted someone daily to keep the sin of sickness and disease off somebody's body. You follow what I'm saying here? I want you to listen to what I'm saying here. The supreme consciousness of a believer. If you don't think of people being saved at least once a day, something is wrong with you. A lot of times when I'm just sitting there, you need to realize and know, God, people are watching us. Am I a vessel meet for the master's table? Can I bless somebody today? If not a word, a smile. Just ministering life to people. Be, remember this. Tomorrow, you may be in a mall shopping and enjoying yourself and go do it. But there are people around you going to hell. You don't say a word unless God tell you to, but beam for Jesus. Beam for Jesus. And when you eat somewhere, pray over your food. And let people see you. Don't go like this. Bless the food, amen. <laughs> Bow your head and say, let's pray. Heavenly Father, pray. I bless this food and sanctify it to my body. In the presence of your spirit and Jesus is mine. There'll be people eating, they'll go. I had a lady come up to me one time and said, you know, I, didn't see, I ain't seen that since I was a kid. I said, you'd like to see it again? Heavenly Father, bless her. And tell her oh, no, no, no. <laughs> but you'd be surprised how many people desperately need prayer. That's what I'm talking about. But exhort one another daily. The point is this. Living for Jesus is not a monthly or yearly or weekly position. It is a daily attitude to save a world from death, hell, and the grave. I cast the devil out one time in a mall. That's something to see. I was walking down the mall, and a devil manifested in the woman. I said, come out of her in Jesus' name. Boy, she hit the floor of that mall. You ought to have seen the police. They said, this mama's messed up, brother. How do you handle a demon in the name of Jesus? And she was delivered. See, a devil's stupid enough to manifest himself Anywheres, and we're smart enough to expose him anywheres. You understand what I'm saying here? I want you to turn with me to John chapter 10. I want you to listen to this. John chapter 10. 
the supreme consciousness of a believer. Listen to what I'm saying here. John chapter 10. Listen to my point first. Following Christ and not religion will lead you into a spiritual world of meditation, manifestation, declaration, and sanctification. I want you to listen to it. Following Christ and not a religion will lead you into a spiritual world of meditation or into a spiritual word, world of God-related thoughts. The book of Philippians said, think on these things. Why do we think about any other things other than what the book of Philippi tells or the book of Philippians tells us to think on? Listen to the point. Following Christ and not religion will lead you into a spiritual world of meditation, of God-related thoughts, of manifestation. When those God-related thoughts become meditation, they speak through your spirit, through a renewed mind, through a crucified body, a manifestation takes place. That's what happened to that lady last night that got touched through her heart. I had meditated on the word healing. You understand what I'm saying, honey? I meditated on that. I follow Christ and not a religion. And I receive God-related thoughts through the, from the spiritual world or from the God throne. That's how those gifts to the spirit operate in your life. They come into meditation. Then they produce manifestation. Then they decree or there's a declaration that comes forth. By Jesus' stripes you are healed. You hear what I'm saying? By Jesus stripes, you are healed. That's what I told you. Go have the doctor checked out. What we did, we meditated, we manifest, we meditation, manifestation, and declaration. Say, so how do you get it to work? You get it to work through sanctification, by setting yourself apart from the world and decreeing and declaring yourself a servant of God. You give God more time than you give anything else. Listen to my point. Following Christ and not religion will lead you into a spiritual world of meditation, manifestation, declaration, and sanctification. Medif what is meditation? God-related thoughts from the throne. What is manifestation? Jesus' work. Go do the work that I do and do it greater. What is declaration? By his stripes you are and will. And he confirms the word with signs following. Not the man, but the word. And then sanctification. You set apart as a servant of the living God, a son in whom God is well pleased. That's a supreme consciousness of a believer. Let me read it again. Following Christ and not religion will lead you into a spiritual world of meditation, manifestation, declaration, and sanctification. John 10, verse 27. Read it with me. The Bible says, my sheep hear my voice. It doesn't say maybe so. I wonder if it's God. I wonder if it's not. It says, my sheep hear my voice. Notice the next statement. And I know them. He never leaves you or forsake you. Notice the next statement. And they Follow me. There are too many people walking around saying, is this God? Jesus said, my sheep know my voice. When God speaks, it's not an impression of the Spirit. It's a witness of the Spirit. Some people say, I feel impressed to tell you. And you know what I do with most of that? Put that on the shelf because God is not an impressionist. When I talk to my board of directors, I don't say, what has the Lord impressed upon your spirit? I say, boys, girls, what has God witnessed to you? When God speaks, his voice is a witness. You know that you know that you know that you know. It's a witness. And I don't want to know any of their thoughts. I say, what did God say? When I talk to my wife on the phone and, and we've been praying about a certain situation and I get back home, I'll say, Kathy, what did God say? Did you meditate? Did you declare? Did you manifest, ma manifest? Did you sanctify? What did God say? I'm interested in the witness of the Spirit, not the impression of the Spirit. Because through an impression, you can get a spirit of error. But through a witness, it's God. It's a still, small voice. It's founded on the truth of the living Jesus. That's what God said in John 10, 27. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. Let me tell you something, man. When I holler, my daughter knows my voice. When my daddy used to say, Jesse, brother, I knew that man's voice. It was behind me many times. I know that man's voice. And he knows me. You understand what I'm saying here tonight? He knows me. And brother, when God, my daddy we used to tell me, follow me, boy. We just had to stay up with him. My daddy always walked fast. When he wanted to go somewhere, he never did go look around a store. He went into a store, got what he wanted, and came out of there. That's how he was. And he'd look at me and say, follow me, boy. 
Man, I'd walk through iron to follow that man. Why? Because he'd use iron on me if I didn't. He don't have to be here tonight, but if he'd holler anywhere across this auditorium, and I can't see most of you people because of the blinding of these lights, he'd say, Jesse, I know where he is. That's daddy. How many times he said, Jesse, come here. I knew what that meant. Gloom and despair and agony on my body. It's amazing what parents tell kids to do. Say, lay down there. We're going to beat you to death, and we don't want you to move. <laughs> How can you not move with somebody whipping you with a switch? A switch will run a devil off, much less a body. A switch is a mean machine. My mother could come out the house and say, Jesse! That could be 300 yards off. Look at it. And she'd go, that finger pulled me 300 yards. <laughs> wow. Power. She had power. One day I thought I could whip her. I got 15 years old. Told my mama, look here, big woman. She weighed 220 pounds. I weighed 100. I said, I'm 15 years old. Don't mess with me no more. I got a hair on my chest. I'm a man. I was popping off at the mouth because I had my girlfriend with me. My mama said, what? This is how she talked. She, she said, Me, what you said, Jesse, huh? Brought yourself over here. I'm going to scramble your brains for you. <laughs> She's a Cajun, see? She said, I'm going to pass a good time on your head. I said, Mama, I don't want to hurt you. Boy, I shouldn't have said that. She said, get them. She said, you want to fight, boy? I used to have a pair of boxing gloves. She said, put them on. I said, Mom, I don't want to hurt you. I told my girlfriend, I don't want to hurt you. And my girlfriend said, she might hurt you. <laughs> this woman's big, Jack. <laughs> she put them in. My mama didn't swing like this. Man, my mama was like Mohammed. Come on, Jack. <laughs> she knocked me down, busted my lip, blood. Man, I, I said, Mom, I don't want to hit you. Bam! Bust me right in the mouth. Blood. I, I, I made me, I ran back to hit her, but she put a double lick on me. Ba ba ba. Hit me on the ground. I'm in bleeding like a stuck off. She said, Get up, 15 year old. By that time, my lip was going, Tuku, Tuku, Tuku. Man, it's hanging down like that. I said, Mama, I don't want to hurt you. <laughs> she said, Come on, let's see what you can do. I said, if I'd hit you or tell daddy, she said, I'll not tell your daddy nothing. I said, okay, Jack, you want some of this? I had that little Cheerio in my arm. <laughs> I was ready. Don't eat my sugar smacks. <laughs> I ran back. I, I throwed a couple of jabs out. I was mad, man. She whipped me. You know, it's embarrassing when you get beat up in front of your girlfriend. <laughs> I took a couple of jabs, and she knocked me, boy. Busted my nose and busted my... Y'all see this little scar on my lip? Some of y'all right there. See that, honey? Can you see it? I mean, when she hit me, my lip went... Come back. Man, I, I mean, she... I saw light. You ever get hit and it seemed like lightning? I was on the ground. And I never, I never met. I looked at man bleeding like a star guard. Mama looked at me. The little girl that I, was my friend. Her girlfriend, she says... I think you better quit. She going to kill you next time. She said, you tell me you're sorry, boy. I said, I'm sorry, boy. I didn't mean to hit you. I'm sorry. I said, you have to bust me up. I said, you're not going to tell daddy, huh? Please don't tell daddy. Don't tell daddy. Daddy will kill me for sure. Don't. She said, not a word. We didn't tell daddy. Daddy come walking in off the job. He looks at me and said, been boxing with your mama, huh, boy? <laughs> Man, I was all swollen up. Eye ah, closed. I thought he was a prophet, man. I said, God told you. He said, no, I put the gloves on her. I don't do it neither, man. The woman's mean. <laughs> she could fight, boy. It's a true story. <laughs> Glory to God. You see, if I'd have meditated and manifested and, dec and declared and sanctified myself, I wouldn't have had a lip problem. 
You know that girl went tell all my friends that my mama whipped me with boxing gloves on. I'll never forget that. I broke up with her over that. It just hurt my ego. I still got a scar. She put a, I mean, she wrapped me, man. And let me tell you, my mother's dead right now. In the grave, she's alive in heaven. But I don't even sass her. See, she told me, just if you smart off at me, even when I'm dead, the rapture will take place. I'll come out that grave and knock your head off at the same time <laughs> as I go to heaven. <laughs> Glory to God. I, I say, okay, all right, let's go. Anything you say. That's true. She was a blessing to God. She was a blessing. She had a supreme consciousness of believing her family into the kingdom of God. Man, we were a bunch of drunks and drug heads and every kind of sin you could think of. But mama would say, I don't deny your sin, boy. I just deny it's right to complete and work in your body. I command the promise of the Lord God over your flesh. And one day you'll lift your hands to the creator and meet this Jesus call and call him Lord. And I'll never forget one time she said, you're going to preach the gospel. I said, no, not me. I'm going to get drunk. I'm going amongst the Philistines. I'm a Delilah looking. I'm looking for Delilahs. I don't want no Naomi's and Roots. You give me a Delilah. Didn't make no difference, brother. I brought a girl to my mother's house one time. I said, what do you think of her? She said, she ain't for you. She's a heathen. I said, Mama, please, for God's sake. Whoa, jack my head. Low. Control yourself, woman. She says, I'll know the girl when I see her. The Lord will witness it to my spirit. I said to myself, <laughs> and I, never, I brought little Kathy home one time. I said, Mama, I want you to meet this girl. This girl's named Kathy Kyrie. She said, that's the one. I said, that what the Lord said, Mama? She said, that's what the Lord said. I said, I don't even like her that much. Now, her sister, mwah, I love her sister. <laughs> she knows about it. She knows about it. Me and her sister were, mm, you know, what's happening, mama? How you doing? <laughs> and you know, it's amazing how God works. I wind up marrying Kathy. And my brother-in-law used to date Kathy. He married Kathy's sister. That's something? Yeah. Mama told me. She said, that's the one. That's her. She said, the Lord witnessed it. That's the girl. Kathy had never read the Bible. Kathy didn't know nothing about the word of God. But Mama had a supreme consciousness. See, she had meditated in the word of God. She had manifested in the word of God. She declared or declared declarations. She sanctified herself. She could hear that witness of the Spirit. It wasn't an impression, and it came to pass. You follow what I'm trying to say here? My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. Now, let me say this in close. T timidity has no place in your life as a follower of Christ. Only boldness, perseverance, and faith produces the God kind of result. Listen to my point, and we'll close. Timidity has no place in your life as a follower of Christ. Only boldness, perseverance, and faith produces results. God said, if you're ashamed of me, I'll be ashamed of you before my father. Now, you may understand why I do some of the things I do. I don't want the Lord to look at me and say, you was ashamed of me in Shreveport, Louisiana. You was ashamed of me in Los Angeles, California. You was ashamed of me in New York City. You was ashamed of me in Monroe. Ashamed of me in Miami, in Fort Lauderdale, in Shiloh, Montana. You was ashamed of me in Seattle, Washington, Mount Everett, Washington. You was ashamed of me in Birmingham, Alabama. No, I'm not going to have that title on me. And I'm not going to be ashamed of his word. If his word said he's the same yesterday, today, and forever, I'm going to tell everybody. I want everybody to listen. That, let me tell you something. The word of God is for you. It's exact. It's full. It's, it's for you. You can have everything the word of God said you can have. If Peter can have it and Paul can have it, you can have it. And if that's the fullness of the spirit, bless God, it belongs to you. All you got to do is receive it. But you have to be supremely conscious of that fact. You take your theology and your religion and throw it out the window, brother, and come to know Christ in trueness. He said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. He didn't say the seminary was. He said he was. I believe in education. I believe in homiletics and hermeneutics and you name it. I understand all that. But one thing I do know, brother, don't add nothing to it and don't take nothing away. And if God said we can have it, it belongs to me and I'm going to walk in it. I'm going to walk in it. 
I'm going to do it. I told the people last night, I believe the Bible from Genesis to the maps. I go beyond Revelation. I get into the maps. I, get the, I want this whole book. I'm be honest with you. Something about, some of these things in this book's tough to receive. It's not easy, but nothing's easy. You know why it's not easy? Because there's a crucifixion of your flesh. But if you'll have that supreme consciousness of a believer, now I want you to think about it. every one of you people today. Tomorrow, if you go out anywhere tomorrow, you'll probably see anywhere from 100 during the whole day to thousands that are not saved. What are you going to do about it? Are you going to let Shreveport go to hell? Don't shout me down when I'm preaching good. Are you going to let Shreveport go to hell? People told me, how can you come to Shreveport and, man, rent these kind of buildings and do all this kind of stuff? It makes no difference what these things cost. Why? Because men came down to the front last night and said, I want to meet Jesus as Lord. Money has nothing to do with it. It's stopping people from receiving what the devil wants to give them. I don't care if it costs billions, trillions. The world must know Christ. And the only way they're going to know is if we have a supreme conscience to such a degree that we have a love for the lost. Everybody, bow your heads. Thanks for listening to this powerful message by Jesse Duplantis. Remember to hit like, subscribe, and the notification bell in order to be up to date with all things Jesse Duplantis Ministries. For more information, visit our website at jdm.org. This media is copyrighted by Jesse Duplantis Ministries for the private use of our audience. Any other use of this media or of any pictures or accounts without Jesse Duplantis Ministries' consent is strictly prohibited.